All right, everyone, welcome back. So today what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be adding artwork to our museum slash gallery. Um, and I'm going to be adding my artwork, um, paintings and sculptures. And I'm actually gonna be using the exact same size of my artwork because I do have substantial size work and smaller work and I like kind of the mix of larger and smaller work. Um, of course, because this stuff is uh, digital, you can make your artwork whatever size you feel like best suits the layout and design of your gallery space. Um, so where I'm gonna put most of my work, I'm gonna put mostly paintings up here around this area and then I'm gonna put uh, some sculptures up on the top floor here too and then maybe a few sculptures down below here so um, in order to get started I'm gonna go ahead and turn off uh, the layers that I do not need so I've already of course um, as we talked about in previous videos uh, set up um, all of my designs so that I've got things on different layers here so I'm gonna go right here and I'll turn off the glass I'll turn off the city I'll turn off uh, the frames for the glass I'm gonna leave the I'll leave the walls and the floor. I'm gonna get rid of the water. Keep the floors for that. Uh, roofs, get rid of that. Okay. Facade, I don't need that. Plot, don't need that. And then I've got these extra lines in here. I don't need those. I'm just going to delete them. I could put them on the curves layer if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. And then stairs and balcony. I'm going to get rid of those too. And let's see. Oh, I can actually delete this layer. I think I've got extra there. All right. Hmm. I'm going to hide a couple of things. I've got what looks like some overlapping kind of geometry and stuff here. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And then this should be doors, right? New layer for that, I guess. Oops, I don't want a sub layer. I want it. Call it fancy door. All right, and then I'll right click on my light bulb to bring everything back okay so i've got the floor i've got the walls cool so up here on my second floor is where i'm going to do most of my um, layout so um, i've got this wall at an angle many of you will have straight walls um, but either way the kind of process should be about the same so i'm going to actually um, duplicate the edge of this wall all the way around and then lower it to a position that matches the um, eye line height that we use for artwork so let's use dupe edge grab this edge here 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 and there enter oops i missed i got the wrong one dupe edge this one enter okay so now let's go ahead and select that curve that I made a mistake. And then I'm gonna go up to edit and I've got rid of all of my other curves in the scene here. So I should be able to go to select objects and grab curves. And it's just gonna grab those top curves there. And then I can join them together. So I've got nice one nice polyline curve that goes all the way around the gallery space. And then what I wanna do is I want to have that curve be at 60 inches high up on this wall. So I'm gonna move it to the floor line here. So just with the move command. And then I'm gonna click on the up arrow here and move it up 60 inches. Okay, um, that's 60 inches is the um, universal standard for wall height of, uh, of artwork in a museum. Just a fun fact there for you. 
So the artwork that I'm gonna be using is gonna be all the artwork that's kind of on my website. So um, paintings are right here. And I'm going to um, start off with my, my square ones because those are the easiest ones to model. And that way um, I'm beginning with the, the easier stuff. So I'll go back all the way in time here. Um, I'm also gonna be putting some larger work on, that, on the back wall. Um, because you can get further away from it and that makes the most sense. So the way I like to do it is I go to my website, I'll maximize a piece of art, um, and then I'll just take a screenshot um, of this and use that as my, uh, as my artwork. So I print screen so that I've got a, um, an image that is reduced in quality but can still not pixelate when it's taking up this much of my screen which is kind of the sweet spot. With materials, once we get into the Unreal Engine, you wanna make sure that your artwork is not like a 50 megabyte uh, JPEG file or something, because then it's just gonna bog down your scene. It's, uh, you know, so you wanna always optimize things for how big is it gonna be in the scene, um, and you don't wanna take it too far. So this one, um, I just took a screenshot of it. It's in my screenshots folder, and then I can kind of uh, crop it out. So you can see what's going on on all my displays here. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna crop it just to the right size here. And save. Okay, I'm gonna create also a folder. Um, this is also where I really start to organize things. I wanna make sure that my project folder for the uh, Rhino file is in a um, uh, external hard drive. Um, and I've got like my little Samsung T5 that I use for uh, most of my work here, Architecture 2024. Uh, I'll create a new folder and in this folder, I'll call it materials or I'll, I'll do one called artwork. And I'll have a separate one called materials later on. Um, and then I'm gonna just go ahead and move this file to that file. So pictures down here and pull this out here and then just move from one to the other. So then now I've got this screenshot. It's still 3.31 megabytes. That's because it's a PNG file. I don't need it to be a PNG. Um, I can also, with Windows, I can save as a, uh, or resize image um, to bring it down here. If I just change it to a JPEG, that's gonna make it 227. I'll usually like to leave it right around a megabyte, 770, yeah, that's probably fine. Don't wanna make it any bigger than that. And then we'll put it back in my folder here. And save, okay. So yeah, and then also um, on my website, I do have all of the dimensions and stuff for the artwork. Uh, we're not gonna add that image to the art yet. Uh, this artwork is titled World As Will. Just title it. And I can kind of start to collate all of the artwork that I wanna put into my scene into this folder for now so that it's easy to reference later on. I'm also going to go ahead and take this folder and I'm gonna dock it in my quick access so that I don't have to go searching for it in the future. I'm just gonna put it right there. Arc 2024, easy to find now. Okay, there's my Rhino file, there's my artwork. When we get into Blender and Unreal Engine, I'm gonna have all of this in this folder. You do not wanna have these folders in a cloud storage that does not um, automatically keep on your computer because um, you can break, break links to materials very easily and it will be nothing but headaches and frustration in the long run here. So that's that piece. Um, and then I'm going to document the, um, the sizes of the work as well, uh, how big I want it to be. The aspect ratio is the most important thing because you don't want to warp the size and shape of your, of your artwork. Uh, so this is a 72 inch by 96 inch piece. So that's gonna be the size of the canvas we create. All right, so I am now going to come back onto this back wall here, um, and I'm going to turn on my auto C plane, and let's put this into shaded here so you can see the grid. Control shift click or command shift click if you have a Mac to um, select that 
wall. All right. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle just from right here. And I'm going to do um, the size, which will match the size of my artwork. So 72 inch by 96 inches. So 72 inch, enter, 96 inch, enter. Wrong direction. Um, and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. Z, enter, S, enter to zoom on the selected object. Then move from right here onto the near. Another thing I like to do is I'll actually like to draw a line down the middle of this canvas here. So this curve and this curve. That way when I go to move it, I can grab the midpoint on that curve and kind of like, like okay, where is this thing going to line up? Okay. And this is also where you will first notice the size of your space, right? Like this is a huge canvas and it looks relatively small in my space. Um, so that could be uh, something that you, you want to address with, by just scaling up your artwork. Um, but I, I think I'm fine with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this into a painting. Uh, so what I like to do next is grab the little ball here and go three inches okay so that extruded it out and if for some reason you're not getting a solid top to your objects there you can also sometimes you have to use the extrude command so just go extrude curve enter and bring it out three inches and if that's not working it's because you don't have solid selected make sure um oh wait, where is it solid yes and if you've got a mac it'll say solid yes somewhere over here so three inches, enter. Oops, sent it back into the wall. Because my canvases are, these ones are a little bit thicker. All right, so then let's also talk about um, op another way of optimizing. So UV maps, of course, are gonna have a UV map for all sides of your object. You're not gonna see anything on the back here. So usually what I like to do is extract surface, click on the back, hit enter, and then just delete that surface because you don't need that extra one and it's gonna clutter up your UV map and you're not gonna be able to um, have your artwork be as, um, as, as detailed because you're gonna have two giant surfaces. One of them is gonna be related to a blank space. So just, uh, just keep in mind, we don't need the backs of things in here. So I'll go ahead and bring that back. And another thing I actually like to do is I bring it off the wall about an eighth of an inch. And that way I've got a little bit of like it's not perfectly touching. It doesn't look like it's coming out of the wall. It looks like it's something on the wall, right? So I'll click on here and I go negative one slash eight. And that just gives me a little bit of a gap, okay? And then I can get rid of the curve that I used to create it or put it on the curves layer. So now that's my first canvas. And I'm just gonna keep modeling all of those canvases. Um, and then you wanna make sure you create new layers for it. So I'm gonna come up here and go layer. And I'm gonna call this um, artwork underscore world as, or just W, W for world as will, world will, something like that, just to kind of keep it a little bit smaller. Um, I always title it artwork first because then you can just have it automatically um, alphabetize and then you'll have artwork, 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 artwork all the way down. Um, and that way you've, you can keep some of it a little bit um, more separate here. And I'm gonna delete the make 2D. Oops, delete this. Don't need the make 2D for right now. Okay. So that's the first piece. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep going and adding more and more. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you all is if you wanted to make frames for your work. So I've got um, these other little uh, paintings that I'm gonna put in here um, that have floating frames. And so sometimes you wanna frame your work. The best way, like with contemporary art, I think is actually to do a floating frame. Come on, right here. So this, these pieces here, Solastalgia, um, they have floating white frames. And so I'm going to go ahead and also make those uh, right now and then um, kind of speed through this and make the rest of my artwork uh, using these techniques. <clears throat> All right, so where do I want to put those? Maybe I'll put those 
like maybe on this wall. So control shift click on this surface here. And now my auto C plane has jumped over there. Um, and I'm going to start off um, by just drawing a rectangle. And that rectangle is me one foot two enter by one foot, oops, one foot five enter. One foot five, enter. Okay. Again, draw a line down the middle here. And then select these two and move from the base point of the mid here. And I'll put them right here. Okay. And then Z, let's go Z, enter, S, enter to zoom on the object. So yeah, it doesn't matter the, the angle of your wall. The nice thing about the auto seaplane is it just goes right to where you want it to go. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, offset this in. So we've got an offset of three quarters and an offset of a half inch. So offset, just regular offset, three slash quarter, enter, and then click here and then in. Okay, and then we're going to go offset again, and we're going to do 0.5, enter, click here, and then in. All right. Cool. So uh, this interior, we're going to go ahead and extrude. I might actually do this backwards. Let's go ahead and um, pull these shapes. out the dimension of the thickness here. So I want this off the wall 1.5 inches. That way I can extrude this back. So I'll do negative, negative 1.5 here, just to keep the surfaces on the top here. Okay, and then I'm gonna use, um, let's see, three quarters of an inch in. So let's go ahead and push, pull this right here, enter. And then we'll go back three slash quarters of an inch. All right. And that already looks like our floating frame, right? Great. So um, easy enough. Um, but I do want this face, it's not, it's actually recessed in a little bit. So I'm going to push, pull this shape in as well. And I'm gonna do, uh, what is it, a quarter of an inch, 0.25, just to give it a little push in there. Okay. Awesome, so this can all be one piece, but again, we want to rotate around to the back, extract, surface, enter, delete. And then Z enter, S enter to zoom in on it selected and right, um, use the, uh, the light bulb to bring everything back. And then I've got four of these. So I'm just gonna hold down Alt and um, maybe turn my grid on, grid snap on too. Okay, so those are the four for Solastalgia. And you can have them all be on the same UV map or you can have them be on separate UV maps. So you can, um, I'm, I think I'm probably just put them all on one UV map. And you can change the resolution of your UV maps too, just to make them a higher resolution. And that way you don't have to worry so much about um, scaling issues. All right, so a new layer, call it artwork, underscore solace. Okay, right click, change object layer, perfect. And then I like to just keep it alphabetized. So um, when it comes to the UV maps here, 
if you go to our properties mapping and we go to UV editor, you can see um, you've got this face is the face that has the artwork on it. So all the rest of the stuff on here, I would scale down. So just hold down shift, scale it way down because it's white. Now, if you wanted to use wood or something for your for your frames, you wouldn't want to scale it down so much. Uh, mine are just white, so it's easy. Um, yeah, so. Since mine are white, I would scale these way down. And then scale this up so it takes up as much of the UV map as possible. Kind of like that, okay? And then of course I would have probably just done, just copied these over afterwards, right? Alt, because then the UV maps will be copied too. Alt, oops. So yeah, now each one of these has a UV map that is exactly the same. That's what I just made. Cool. So um, the rest of this, I'm just gonna kind of keep plugging away. I'm just gonna uh, keep using the uh, rectangle tool, extracting the back surface and labeling things. All right, so I've got all of the artwork here uh, modeled and placed on my walls. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my auto C plane just to return the construction plane back to the top view here. Um, so yeah, I've got all of these paintings on the walls. If we look at it in monochrome here, you can kind of see my spacing. And I mean, I could fix a lot of this spacing and stuff a little bit later on, but um, I've got some of them grouped together. I've got some of them more spread apart. I'm avoiding the corners quite a bit. Um, just so that I've got a uh, kind of nice distribution that's not completely stagnant with its spacing. It's going to have a little bit of variation between um, the spacing. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some of my sculpture. Um, I'm going to create sculpture stands. Um, and uh, yeah, so my sculptures I always create in a, a digital form, but um, so, so they're really quite easy for me to... Uh, just kind of copy and paste into the scene. Here's a sculpture stand. And the sculpture stands, of course, will be based on the size of your um, of your of your artwork. If it's larger, you'll do shorter sculpture stands. Um, but this one, if I let's go to a right view here see the height of this sculpture stand here is four foot two and then from a top view here what is the dimension it's four foot two by one foot six so that's a and that's you know just an extruded um, rectangle okay <clears throat> And then I usually move from a base point at the bottom here, and then I just put it at a little corner area there, and then I kind of move it around afterwards. Um, and one thing about sculptures is you should technically not have them right in front of like a painting. There should be kind of a, a little bit of a gap between where you have the sculpture and where you have the painting. All right, welcome back everyone. So um, what we have here is our final 
gallery with all the artwork modeled and put inside of it. Um, I've got some uh, large scale sculptures. I've got lots of paintings on the walls and I'm ready now to add materials. Um, and I'm gonna do a couple of the materials, UV mapping them in Rhino, and then I'm also going to uh, then transfer into Blender and do an introduction on um, how to optimize things for Blender. But first things first, uh, you wanna make sure you have all of your objects on their own individual layers, and you wanna make sure that the layers are named properly. Um, I've got my layers all lined up properly here. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to select the object that we want to add materials to. Oh, actually, sorry, one other thing, housekeeping first. Um, you want to make sure that all of your objects are named the same as your layers. Uh, in previous videos, I've discussed how to do this by creating a button on a PC version. You cannot create this button on the Mac version, um, but if, for PC folk, um, you can create a button right here that's just you push it and it renames it. You can see now we're under the properties here. The name of the object is uh, um, named the same as the layer here. So it just renames it. Um, and if I look at the script here, I can go to edit toolbar button and I find my rename button here and it just runs this little Python script. And this Python script will be located in the, uh, in the details panel on this YouTube video. So just uh, go to the details, copy it, and, um, and that's what you would use. So you can also, uh, for Mac people, just type macro editor, and that'll come up. And then you can just paste that JavaScript or that, that Python script into that and push play, and that'll run it that way. Um, but yeah, so in order to create this uh, this little rename toolbar here, the way I do that is I go to um, new toolbar button here, and you go to new command, next, title it, rename, and then paste the command there, and then hit next, and that's basically all there is to it. And you'll have a little tool up here for doing so. So yeah, now I've got all of my objects in my space named after the layers and that way it'll show up that way in um, Blender when I bring it into Blender later on. Okay. Very cool. So um, with UV mapping in Rhino, Rhino 8 has gotten much better at UV mapping. So if you choose to, you can do all of your UV mapping for your artwork in, um, in Rhino and then bring it into Blender. But I'm going to do kind of a mixture. Um, also, Blender does have some better capabilities with UV mapping in certain ways, especially when it comes to painting objects, which we're going to be doing for some of our sculptures that are not just one solid color, uh, especially our my epoxy resin sculptures that are um, a few different colors of dye inside of an object that are translucent. So I'll show how to do that as well. All right. So with this object selected here, I'm in the rendered view so we can see it. I'm gonna now click on our properties tab here and then on this little texture mapping tab here. And then I'm gonna pull up the UV editor here and you can see my UV map right here. And I can modify this if I want to, like I might actually wanna make this a little bit smaller so there's a little bit more of a border here and space between uh, these other objects here. If I zoom in close, you can see there is a nice gap on my UV map between the, the bars on the side. Um, let me just Z enter S enter to zoom in on the selected object here. And then remember we did remove the back of these and that's why the UV map only has, uh, doesn't have two of these giant rectangles. And so you can actually have a higher resolution image associated with your artwork. Okay, great. So we have this. Now we're going to go ahead and save this and we're going to save it to, um, a folder. I've got now my, my prism gallery. I've named my uh, gallery the prism gallery and I've got uh, inside of here I've got my rhino files and I've got a UV map section and I've already done this but you know I'm uh, just you know I've already done it once but I'm going to do it again here uh, and I'm going to call this Pantarea UV map. Okay. So now we go to Photoshop and we put the artwork on the um, on the on the panel there. So let's go to my Prism Gallery folder, um, and then we can go to Prism Gallery Rhino, UV Maps. Right click on this and open with Adobe Photoshop. Great. 
Great. So then we find the artwork on um, the computer here, and I've got a folder here for artwork, and I have my file right here. And I'm going to just simply um, drag and drop it up to here. So it's opening on a new tab. And I'm looking at it here to see, okay, it does pixelate a little bit when we get really close. So I might actually want it to be a little bit higher resolution than this. So let me go ahead and find the original. Um, you probably be okay with about this, but I, I would say like 500 kilobytes. It doesn't really matter the, the size of the object here right now because um, we're gonna scale it to the UV map. So let me go ahead and find the original, I'll be right back. All right, so yeah, that's about where I want it to be. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my UV map here and I'm actually gonna make this UV map a little bit larger. So I'm gonna go to image size here and all of my artwork, um, by default these UV maps are 1024 by 1024. I'm gonna make it 2048 by 2048 and hit okay. So that'll just increase the overall size of my UV map. Um, then I'm gonna bring this and I'm gonna just hit V and copy it over here, okay? And then I'm going to go Control T to transform it and then hit Shift to lock it in place. And then I'm going to scale it just so it's almost perfect. You wanna to try to get it as close to perfect. Even if you're changing the kind of aspect ratio, it'll stretch back out on top of the canvas just fine. And then we hit Enter great and then i'm going to actually change the opacity here just so i can see yeah i think that's about perfect good all right and then um i'm gonna go ahead and hit g for uh for my paint bucket tool and just fill in the rest of the space with white and that's because the canvas on the sides of the painting is white so then i'm gonna go ahead and say flatten the image or hide the background flatten the image Discard hidden layer, okay. Well, I don't know what happened there. Huh. Whatever, that still works, okay. And then we go ahead and save it as just a JPEG and I don't need it to be, I want it to be maybe 1.5 or one megabytes is fine there. So quality, I'll just do high quality. No, I want it bigger than 328. Let's just do maximum right around one megabyte should be fine for my artwork. Okay, great. So that's now done. All I gotta do is close this. Okay, and then we just find it in our UV map folder here and then drag and drop it onto the object. And it should automatically create a material in our materials tab and we're good to go. So that is the basics of adding materials in, um, in Rhino. Um, and then uh, the next thing we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and start adding the materials in uh, Blender here. So I've already done another one of these too. I'm just gonna just go ahead and put it on this one. Um, Make sure when I get close to it, it looks good. All right. So I've already done those two materials. The last thing we want to do before we bring this into Blender is uh, think about adding some new materials and um, or not, some, some materials that you've got available in Rhino that'll transfer over to, um, to Blender as we're kind of working here. Um, I've also, of course, you can see I added a couple of things. I added a little railing around the uh, around the open areas inside of the gallery space. I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep those. I might delete them later on because, you know, they're kind of functional in the f but they do block a little bit of my view. So, we'll see how that goes. But if I wanted to say have uh, materials on the outside um, not and that are not on the inside, I would need to separate the outside from the inside. Um, and so to do that, I would just have to extract the surfaces. So let me just extract the surfaces on the inside of my walls here. Okay. 
I'm going to hit enter and then join them together. And then I would create a new layer and call it um, walls interior. And then change object layer. Okay. And the same thing with like if I wanted to have um, the floor with a different material than the ceiling underneath here, I would need to extract those surfaces. So extract the floor surface here and then hit enter and create a new layer and call it floor um, upstairs. Change, change object layer. All right. <clears throat> and then extract surface down here. If I wanted to do something on this floor. Oh, that one's already extracted. So just anything you want to have a different material, um, you extract the surfaces and put it on a different layer so you can apply a material to that. So like this interior here, I might want to have as well. And you know, I might just actually add this. I think I'm probably going to just do white walls on the top up here too. So I'll just put this on the same layer as my walls up here. Okay. Great. All right, so after this is all done and all set up, I'm looking good. Um, I'm going to now um, export this all as an FBX. But the one thing I'm not thinking about that I might wanna do is um, add some, some of the Rhino materials. So for example, if I wanted to do like a wood floor or something on here, um, or you know any other material, let's go ahead and put it into rendered here and then go to my materials browser and go shopping for some new materials. So I'm going to go ahead and um, import from a material library and I'm going to go to architectural and I'll go to floor and we can do, I don't know, maybe ceramics. Let's look at some extra large icons here. mosaic striped reflective hmm. I don't know what any of these look like so uh, black and white tile that might be a little too chaotic um, let's see all right so I found this concrete that I kind of like I might use that outside or inside I haven't decided so I'm just gonna go ahead and assign it to some stuff here The plot assigned to layers of objects. Okay. And whether or not we, we keep this exact material is not a big deal um, because I just want to copy them over there so I get the seamless textures out of here. Okay, so to export this for Blender, it's uh, relatively simple. You just uh, select all of your objects, and then you go File, Export Selected, change the type here to Motion Builder FBX, go to our options here. 
you want to make sure you do not have, and this is really important, do not have export lights and do not have export views. You do want to make sure that the rest of this is selected. Just follow along with what I've got selected here and hit OK. And they should be sticky. So, um, of course, rename all your, your, your stuff. Make sure it's renamed. Um, and then export selected and so from now on your fbx settings should be the same there so okay we go motion builder fbx and then find a permanent home for this i'm going to put it in my new folder here call it fbx open this up and save oh I'm gonna put a name I'm gonna actually call this AAA underscore prism because you'll see in a minute I'm going to actually um, re-export all of the uh, FBX's again so that they're not all in one file and I want to make sure that this one is easy to find okay so I don't really care much about um, the, the settings here. I wanna make sure I've got good enough settings because um, if you have anything curvy and you do not put enough subdivisions in it, the curvy objects will end up being kind of flat. Um, and we're gonna clean up all of this geometry later anyway, so I'm just gonna leave it at a pretty high poly count. Especially, you know, like these sculptures and stuff are, have a lot of curves to them. So you want to make sure you've got that set up properly. And then we hit OK. All right. So that's now fully saved. Save it again. And now to download Blender, all you got to do is go to the Blender um, website. And the one we're using right now is 4.0.2. Um, so go ahead and download it for free. I typically like to uh, donate a little bit when I'm downloading for the first time, just like five bucks or something like that, just because it's such a powerful software and it's free. Might as well keep encouraging them to be free. But that'll do it for this one. We will see you on the next one.